Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Uh, Ted Up Peterside, CEO and is the chairman, Stambig IBTC Holdings PLC. He joins us this morning to get his perspective on the going on. Thank you for coming on this morning. morning. Uh, I know in 2012, this was a very hot topic at that time, and there was different views, but is this the same kind of argument and the same kind of approach or the issues that we faced in 2012, or is this particularly different from what we saw then? It is similar to 2012. If anything, the position today is more serious and the case for deregulation today is even stronger now than in 2012. For a variety of reasons, the, the, I, I think the price of crude oil is, is, is somewhere around $45 and will probably stay in that region for the 5 to 50 or 55 thereafter. I'm, I'm among those who believe that the crude oil ma market has changed almost forever with the advent of shale producers, the revenue profile of the nation is a lot worse today than it was in 2012. And the, and the other argument, if you remember in 2012, that people used, people called me in 2012 and said, you know, we won't mind going through this adjustment if only the government itself would take some pain. Well, if this government has shown that they're willing to take some pain themselves from the president, the vice president, and all that stuff. So if you won't do it with this government, then I, I don't know when you'll ever do it. But having said that, I think I should make it very clear because there's some confusion. I like the word deregulation because that is what I favor. Deregulation exists in aviation fuel. Deregulation exists in diesel. Petrol is the problem and kerosene. I mean, what, what do we have in those cases? I'm confused myself because people use different words. They talk about deregulation and then they announce a price or a maximum price and so on. For aviation fuel, nobody announces a price. For diesel, there's no price announced by anybody. It's between willing, willing buyer, willing seller, supply and demand. So those, those, those um, products are trading at a price that is consistent with what is happening in neighboring countries and, and also, also the world market price. Petrol, we've had this fixation in Nigeria. And it's not caused by this government or the past one. It's gone on for decades. A government does not promise you the price of anything. Not the price of rice, not the price of gari, not the price of housing. But they want to promise you the price of petrol. What is the point of promising only one item? And then the unions too somehow are fixated with the price of only one item. Almost as if they have been brainwashed by what happened 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Now I think it's important that as a nation we're facing a crisis that we forget about the partisan differences and pull together. And I'm happy to see that one or two unions, the, more, the ones that are a bit more progressive, have made it clear that they favor deregulation. We have to free this economy from the burden of this distortion called um, petrol subsidy once and forever. And let me explain one thing. It is the deregulation, in my mind, cannot coexist with price fixing by government. If government wants to fix the price, NMPC, who also sell petrol, should announce their own price for their own petrol and leave others to, to bring in petrol and sell it at their own price. So NMPC can be a reference price, but I don't like this idea of deregulating and you announce a price, you know, a maximum price for all, because you do not control the dynamics. You don't know where the price of crude oil will be tomorrow, the exchange rates and so on. So I think it's for NMPC as one supplier in the market to announce what its current price is and leave the rest of us to talk about deregulation. Mr. Once, Mr. Sorry, yeah. when you come here, I don't, I don't know if... if um, the, a lawyer, Mr. Falano, came up to talk about the fact that the Petroleum Act, if this is a deregulation, this would be going contrary to the Petroleum Act. Maybe, is, that no, is it not possible that that's why the NNPC insists, or the Minister of State insists, that this is not a deregulation? but a price, a new price. Okay, engine. listen, I'm not here to, 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 to discuss law. It's not my area of competence. No, I'm, I'm an economist. Yes. I'm also, I'm looking at it as, as a federal government that has a mandate. And, and they have a firm mandate. They control most, I mean, a, a political party that controls most of the state governments. You control the Senate, you control the House of Rep. If with that broad mandate, you cannot take actions like deregulation, who will take it tomorrow? Bear in mind that in 2012, it was a house divided. Even before the president announced the regulation, House of Rep, the speaker was going in a different direction. They, they met on a Sunday, said the president should stop, and so on. Here we have a government that is a bit more, has a broader mandate. It's still early in its tenure, has some goodwill. 
So if you cannot harness that and pull all the elements together to deregulate, then I don't know if, if and when, and also plus realizing the poor revenue profile. I think in April, which was last month, I'm told central bank re re receipts in foreign currency were as low as something like $600 million. Petrol imports alone can consume over half that. So are we going to be a nation that consumes half a foreign exchange on one item? And common sense also dictates that the lower you make the petrol price, the more of it we consume, especially the rich people, because with their many cars and boats and so on, they consume a lot more. Not so much the poor. I'll, I'll come to the poor later. The lower you make the petrol prices also, the more that more of the petrol goes across the border to all our neighboring countries. So you're fighting the battle against reality, which you will lose eventually. And also, when you... I think if anybody loves the idea of subsidy, we are now in 2016. There are ways you can dispense the subsidy in 2016, which were not available in 1984. We have moved on in terms of biometrics, in terms of mobile phones, in terms of national ID card that, that's a payment instrument. You can actually wake up today, have deregulation, and have a subsidy payment or safety net payment that gives every, every Nigerian adult above 18, um, 200 naira a month, and tell him this is his own subsidy, almost as it's done with fertilizer. That way there's no abuse, because with the biometrics, you, you know who you're giving it to, Everybody gets the payment. The richest man in Nigeria gets 200 naira. The poorest one gets 200 naira. I tell you what, in my village, people who have been getting zero from, from government, if every 18-year-old got 200 naira a month, they would jump for joy and sing Buhari's praises. And what is the cost of it? Let's imagine that the 18-year-olds and above are roughly 70, mil 70, 70 million. A 200 naira to one, that is 14 billion a month, times 12 months, 168 billion naira we're discussing. That is a lot less than we squander on the oh, so called petrol subsidy. Paying these large sums of money to a petrol mafia, an entire ecosystem that is built around fraud, that receives bridging payments supposedly to sell petrol at the same price all over the country. If you go to, to, the, to, the, to the far north, the border areas, riverine areas, some filling stations, they have not seen petrol in 11 months. But somebody collects, I mean, petrol, supposedly for them, collects a, an extra payment, so-called bridging, for him to deliver in there the control price, and takes it across the border. This is not sustainable. You, you know what I'm saying here? I think you've just touched to open up so many vistas here of, on this argument of petroleum, uh, whether subsidy, whether increase. Looking at the bridge which the government has put there, which they say is just to help the poor, that is why they have pegged it at 145 naira to a dollar. And you also put that side by side with uh, the uh, decision uh, telling marketers go source for your dollars in the open market. Uh, I had a, a discussion uh, earlier today with someone who said there's also the possibility of you uh, getting, uh, when you source in the open market, get your dollars in the open market, there's the possibility of getting the, the petrol to buy at a liter 300 naira. Uh, because of the way the dollar is going in the market against the Naira. These are some of the fears of the government. Is there another recipe? Because if you say uh, this doesn't really help, you're not the only one who's argued in that by putting that ceiling. What better ways can we, apart from the 200 Naira suggestion you've just put there, uh, that can help the average Nigerian, if, if you get the argument that some of them have brought to the fore. You know what you're asking me is what other ways apart from the, apart from the best way? If you have the best oh, okay, way, okay, which that, is... That, that's the best way. The best way is that, like I said last week, fertilizer, you can delink the subsidy element from the actual product and pay it to every adult directly using these newer instruments which are foolproof. Now, to answer your question about the link with exchange rate, when you link it to exchange rate, that even creates more confusion. How can a government insist that the exchange rate is 200 naira to one? And they start telling people that but we are pricing petrol at 285 to one. Have we devalued the naira? If we have, let's know that. But even if it's not about arguing about devaluation or not, the reality is that we cannot afford to, to pay for all the petrol using all our scarce dollar resources to give it away at, at, at a reduced price. And my palliative, if you notice, was focusing on what can you do for the poorest of the poor. 
I know the government has safety nets they mentioned in the budget. They are useful, but you know I don't like them because they're selective. If there are 170, mil 170 million Nigerians, how do you pick out the one million who are the poorest of the poor? I know many around me who say they're poorest of the poor. My method, it doesn't matter once you're an adult, have the, the required instruments, national ID card or whatever, the new instrument, you get your own share of this safety net. You know what I'm thinking? That can even help us keep our security checks and get people registered. It, it, it gives people an incentive to register for the, for the national ID card. There will be a stampede for it. It, it improves your control o over Boko Haram and everything else because even the terrorists will have to decide.